Welcome to the Nonprofit Show. We are so glad you're here. We hope that you are in costume as well, because the three of us are really excited to have with us for today's show, Andrew Miller, who joins us as director of your part-time controller. Howdy there, Andrew. We're excited to learn, learn more about you, but you bring to us the topic that we've not really like set some time dedicated to this solely. So you're here to talk to us about the traditional versus the modern CFO and the CEO relationship. So excited to learn from you in just a moment about that. But before we dive deep, we want to remind you, if you cannot recognize us today, Julia Patrick is here. She's the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. And I'm Jarrett Ransom, also Miss Candy Corm, the nonprofit nerd, <laughs> CEO of the Raven Group. And again, just honored to serve alongside. You know, there's not many days that keep us off air, and Halloween is one of them. So we are dressed for the occasion here with all the treats, but we also have a wonderful treat from our presenting sponsors. So thank you for your loyal support and your investment into the nonprofit sector. So thank you goes out to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, your part-time controller, again, where Andrew is joining us from today. Also, thank you to Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk. And if you have not checked out these companies, as soon as we wrap up today's episode, we encourage you to do that because they have a lot of good goodness to share with you. And I really like to say their mission is your mission because they want to help you do more good in, around, and throughout your community. Mm -hmm. Speaking of more good, we have more goodness up for you to check out and all of these platforms. So you can download the app. You can just take your smartphone and scan that QR code right now. You can also find us on podcast and broadcast platforms. So anywhere you consume your entertainment, chances are the nonprofit show is there as well. Okay, Andrew, you have waited patiently and we love your get up, but Andrew Miller joins us, director of your part-time controller. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And tell us a little bit, where are you joining us from? And, you know, what is your role in the nonprofit sector as it relates to YPTC? Absolutely. So um, I came to YPTC about two and a half years ago as an associate um, and jumped into the manager role um, and then uh, and then also moved into this director role for the Houston market. Um, so I have I have a lot of experience here at YPTC as well as before this ain't my first rodeo. I uh, was also the CFO and CEO for uh, nonprofit organizations previously. So I have a lot of experience in this area. Fantastic. Wow. So um, I, I always love it when we have guests who can who sat on both sides of the table, um, because I just think it makes for such a richer conversation. And um, I can tell that you're not an old cowboy, um, but you've like you said, this ain't your first rodeo. So I think it's going to be fun to get your perspective on this, Andrew. And, and we're really looking forward to kind of talking through this. So paint the picture of what the traditional CEO, CFO relationship and how that structure, I don't want to say it was in the past because I think a lot of folks are still doing it, but what does that look like? Yeah, this is a great starting point, Julia. Um, so the traditional CFO um, focused on a few key areas and, and I don't want to downplay the importance of these, these areas. But typically, traditional CFOs were focusing on the accuracy of the accounting uh, information. Um, they were also focused on compliance to regulatory ent entities, um, and then also focused on uh, risk management is another area. And then the financial reporting. So with the financial reporting, though, traditionally what that looked like was more of a backwards looking historical type financial reporting. So we're looking at what happened last month, last quarter, last year, um, layering in some budget versus actuals. Uh, but traditionally, we were looking backwards in our financial reporting. Yeah. Wow. You, I mean, <laughs> when you just say the word backwards, that in itself, Jarrett, right? Yeah, that caught me off guard too. really looking backwards, you know, in that space, we were just talking about, you know, the great partnership 
that the CEO and the CFO can have and really the finance team with all members of the organization. I'm curious how often you see this traditional model still being played out and used today. All the time, all the time. <laughs> So, um, you know, a, a lot of our clients, um, they they are using the tools that they got from uh, from, you know, the, the prior people in their roles. Right. We're always capitalizing and utilizing that, um, you know, uh, historical financial reporting. And, um, you know, I think we've all heard from nonprofits. That's the way we've always done it. Right. So we hear that all the time whenever we're working with our clients. Um, and, and our job is to educate them, train them, and um, show them what, what can be possible um, uh, in, in the modern age. Well, talk to us about this modern age because I'm ready for it, right? Like I'm always ready for a shakeup, a little bit of a disruptor, love innovation, finding new ways of doing things that have a better you know, ROI or a better partnership. So talk to us now about the modern relationship between that CEO and the CFO. Absolutely. So uh, the first thing that a uh, modern CFO is looking to do is to look at the uh, forward-facing forecasting financials, right? So you know, we've, we, we certainly don't want to discount the historical information. That's important because that helps us with the forecasting. But we're also layering in one thing at YPTC we do is, is called a rolling forecast and our clients love it. Um, it's, it's taking a look at the, um, the rest of the year, what we think is going to happen. And then we're updating that monthly with what has happened and updating our forecast for the future. Um, a big, you know, area that this served us well in is looking at the um, the relief funding that came out of the pandemic, right? So we're looking at um, these huge influxes of funding. How are we going to utilize that? And also, how are we going to save some of that for, for rainy day? Um, so uh, what, what we saw happen a lot with, with organizations is they used up all their relief funding and now there's no new relief funding coming in. So right. the wealth dried up, right? Um, so that's, that's one area that, that is really important is that forward looking financials. Yeah. You know, I've seen that CFO person serve so many ways over the last four years. It's really been an integral role for the organization. Andrew, I'm sure you've heard, but many organizations, well, many organizations did not do so well and sadly have closed. Others, however, have seen this huge influx of cash, right? Whether it's from the CARES Act and other funding entities that that has been available, but now organizations are saying, okay, now we need to right size the ship, right? We jumped up to a 17 million organization, uh, but now we're really looking at about seven, right? And so I can only think this modern CFO plays a critical piece in forecasting, okay, where do we need to look three years down the road? Is that is that an accurate Assess, assessment? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's that's another key integral piece of the uh, CFO, the modern CFO and where they should be looking is um, you should be the, the modern CFO should be looking for what air, what other opportunities are there for funding to to um, to support that increase um, in, in your programs, as well as what's working and what's not working. So providing that financial analysis to the CEOs, to the board, um, to help them understand, hey, we had this event last year, this year, um, you know, last year it, it served us threefold, this year, you know, it doubled um, what we put into it. And so we're looking at, you know, this, maybe this event is not for us, you know, again this year. So looking at those, providing that analysis so that uh, the, the management and board can make business decisions, right? Yeah, Absolutely. Do you think that this is something that the CFO and, and that whole department has always kind of known or observed, but they haven't articulated it or they haven't been invited to the table to talk about this? Because I've got to believe this is not a new amount of knowledge or the sources of knowledge are new. It seems to me like it's more of, an, of a communication 
um, almost like a role issue. Like, and I don't know if, if I'm articulating that, you know, well, but these, these people that have been in accounting and finance, they haven't just tracked the numbers. They've had to have been thinking about these things all along, or is this a new day? You know, that's, that's an interesting question. I think that, um, I think that one thing is that the CEO's role is shifting. And so that also allows some opportunity for the CFO to step up and um, help be that thought partner, that strategic uh, business partner for the CEO. Um, the CEO is out there trying to get, um, you know, they're, they're shifting from operational to more strategic as well. So the CFO just in tandem is is stepping into that that strategic partner role along with the CEO. I think that's a big part of it. So I've got to ask this question then, you know, what has forced this? I mean, we look at at this amazing time that we are living in um, pre pandemic, pandemic, post pandemic. Jared and I always say there was uh, there was a global health crisis, but there was also a pandemic and social of social justice, of civil unrest, of economic duress, um, a political climate that was has been fraught with a lot of stress. Um, so there there hasn't just been one input, if you will, to use a cowboy phrase, a county cowboy phrase. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. So you know what has navigated us through some of this change. And I guess the part B question of, of this is that, is this temporary or is this where we're going to, is this where we're going? Right? I will start with your last question first. It is not temporary. This is a permanent and, okay. and it's an ongoing evolving, um, you know, shift uh, is what I think. Um, what, what I see is number one, we, we all have uh, in our job um, descriptions, other duties as assigned, right? That's, <laughs> a lot more of that is, is opening up for the CFO now. And um, and I think what what is is driving that is number one, technology. So we're we're in an age where uh, technology and AI is helping us to make more our jobs more efficient. Um, it is providing analysis that we never could have provided before because it would have been too time consuming. Um, one one simple example that that we see a lot of times at our nonprofit organizations in the accounting function is think about entering a, uh, transactions. You've got hundreds or thousands of transactions each month. If you're entering those in one by one, that's going to take a lot of time. Um, most financial systems now are capable of um, connecting to your bank and downloading those transactions. And think about how much time that's freeing up. That's just one process of many that is freeing up more time for the CFO and that CFO should now be shifting, taking advantage of that and shifting into analyzing the business, providing financial analysis um, and looking for opportunities for fundraising. So I think that that the technology efficiency is creating a space for the, the CFO to uh, perform at a much higher level. Yeah. I really appreciate your response to that. There's so much integration, automation we can use to streamline. I'm curious too, Andrew, if you're seeing, you know, kind of this new wave of leadership that yeah. says, I'm I'm ready to do things differently. Thanks. I don't need to have a CFO sitting next door to me in the office. There's a lot of distributed workforce. I love the fractional CFO, right? Like I've seen great success in this space. Um, and I really do think that, you know, now we, we've we shown there's so many roles that can be done remotely that don't necessarily have to have a seat on that full-time roster. Are you seeing a switch in this as well? Yeah, I think, I, I think that has been um, an ongoing, uh, evolving, you know, area. And what, um, you know, what, what we're seeing a lot is that, um, and, and our hope is at YPTC that the organization has somebody to do that transactional level work. And then we're able to fill in in that middle area, the controllership, the CFO area. And then we're just, we're providing information to the CEO so that they can have those, um, you know, discussions about business opportunities, uh, opportunities at the organization. And we're having those discussions as well and have a seat at the table with the board 
to facilitate those conversations. So I do think that there's a shift in not necessarily all the roles that need to be filled, but just how how much time each of those roles is taking. And that fractional CFO controllership is is highly uh, valuable, I think. Yeah, you know, and I'm seeing it in other spaces. I'm seeing it as, oh, yeah. you know, marketing, even in development. Yeah. There's so many fractional opportunities um, coming coming about, you know, in into our sector. It's just fascinating to me, but I, I'm also curious, right? Because we've had your colleague on say, there's not enough accountants. So how yeah. are we going to keep up with this modern, you know, way yeah. of, of doing this type of work? We're busy. <laughs> I think that's what it amounts to, right? You're um, very busy. Yeah, and, and that that is absolutely the case. We've got baby boomers retiring, right? And uh, not enough people filling um, and, and uh, seeking out those accounting uh, degrees and professions, right? So we are starting to see the beginning stages of the shortage, and it's just going to continue. So um, if you uh, have children, if you're fixing to have children, please have the conversation how important accounting is. It's not going away. It's only evolving and becoming more fun. Um, we're focusing on uh, less of the more administrative things and a lot more of the fun analysis piece. Um, so yeah, that's my, so I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> no, stay on it. I love it. And I, and I really do appreciate the fact, you know, like, Working in the nonprofit accounting space is very different than the for-profit accounting. There's there's some nuances. There's uh, a lot of uniqueness that we need to pay attention to. And I'm wondering if that's also why the traditional model of the CEO-CFO relationship is really kind of going to the wayside. Because, Julia, how many boards have you served on where probably the banking person served as the treasurer simply because they worked at a bank? Yeah. And, you know, I think the thing which, you know, the very beginning of this conversation, which is pretty magical, I love the way that you phrased, you know, looking backwards, the, the task aspect of getting stuff done, the paperwork processing, if you will, versus strategic leadership. And, and one of the things during this conversation, it strikes me is that with the fractional uh, nature of bringing in this outside talent, you know, HR, development, of course, accounting, finance, any of these things, you're bringing people into your organization that are seeing other things going on in the sector. Mm -hmm. And I think that's got to be an incredible value to say, you know, hey, I just witnessed this or I work with a group that's doing that so that we can actually move our organizations along more quickly. And I don't know if you see that. I know that there's a certain degree of, um, you know, compliance and you don't talk about your other clients, things of that nature, but just understanding what other organizations are doing, I've got to believe is a huge win for the sector. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, one, one thing, what are, what are nonprofit organizations always looking at? They're always looking at impact, right? Yeah. And so how do we, you know, that's that's not a new conversation, but the um, the method by which we can come up with that impact and the value that we're serving to our community, um, a lot of that information relies in the accounting function and the finance function. And that's a key integral part to assessing the impact, showing the impact to uh, to our, our communities that we're serving. Um, and, and ultimately, our hope is that that brings awareness and, and dollars in the door to help us provide more impact, right? Yeah. 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 It's so interesting. Well, we don't have a lot of time left, but I want to talk about kind of as we're talking about the, the change um, of our of our sector, especially accounting and finance. You know, you you started that part of this conversation with the demographic shift. You know, we're seeing baby boomers retire and we're not seeing enough, you know, younger kids coming into the practice um, of accounting, public accounting, even finance. Is there a generational issue here that we need to be thinking about? Um, and, and also, I guess it tags to behavior. You know, are younger um, accounting and finance majors 
and talent, are they more interested in working on a team or do they want to be just doing accounting and finance? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so as far as the the gener generational impact, I'm going to avoid the the ages trap and say that no, there's you know we're uh, anybody can do it, right? Um, so I think that uh, there certainly though is a shift to embracing technology, embracing the 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 new ways that we can make our our jobs more efficient. That's extremely important. Um, and I do think um, younger folks coming in have a better uh, understanding of that to begin with, and that's going to really help them. Um, and I also I, I just think that, um, you know, continuing to focus on the organization, their impact and, and providing that value to the CEO and being that thought partner uh, for them um, is, a, is an integral part. I think, you know, as far as the team aspect, I think that um, there there is a sense, uh, especially with remote work, that I think people are seeing the flexibility of being able to, you know, uh, kind of provide their individual contribution um, away from a team. But at least at YPTC, we're, we're always happy to see. We just had a staff meeting and saw each other in person and everybody was excited and and so we we all are a team here, and and so I think that that um, I think that that still is present that people still want to be a part of a team. Yeah, um, yeah. It just is a it's a different functioning team, I guess. Or the you know the way we we gather as a team is different. Well, I think there's so many great opportunities for this. I love Andrew that you're like you know let let's. Let's shout out to all of our youth, you know, accounting, finance, CFO roles. They can be a lot of fun and they provide a lot of benefits. You know, the YPTC team, you guys serve, you know, exclusively with the nonprofit sector. You're across the nation. You're doing so much amazing work. And you have the support and services of other teams where I think, yeah. Julia, like one person on that full-time oh. roster just doesn't have access to what, you know, the modern role can provide. Yeah, I think it's magical thinking. And, and I think too, that, you know, maybe accounting and finance and these roles and this redefinition of behavior um, will leak into other areas, right? So, you know, we talked about it, you know, HR, marketing, development, I mean, we're starting it, to see it a lot more. Yeah. And I just feel like those organizations that lean into this in some ways, Jarrett, and I don't know what you're seeing as we wrap up, but it seems to me like you get the best talent, right? Because right. you, you can, can kind of then get people at their best where they are in their zone of genius and then, you know, let, let those other folks do what they are best at. Right. 100%. Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a new way. And I think the, um, you know, a few things that I wanted to hit on real quick for, for the modern CFO, and this is in other areas too, just like you mentioned, Julia, um, the skills that we're looking for in a modern CFO, um, the new skills really are the leadership, the strategic planning. We mentioned technology, embracing technology, and also change management because with, with these changes, we have to figure out how to layer in that change across the organization. So those, those are highly valued skills right now. That's really interesting. That's, yeah, that's fascinating because um, I think about all the kids in, when I was in college, you know, that went back in the day, it was the big eight, you know, and the big eight accounting firms would come to campus and recruit. You know, you could see those kids, you know, that... They had like a certain look and they had a different, you know, certain speak and they were kind of didn't maybe exhibit those tendencies that you're talking about now. Right. Yeah. I mean, typically. were they wearing cowboy hats? <laughs> no, they weren't wearing these either or nor were they wearing candy corn. So yeah, definitely not. Yeah. You know, we've always been super impressed. It's going to sound like a commercial with the YPTC team. Truly every representative that has come, you know, to join us on the show, which is not easy because it's a live conversation that really, you know, chokes up a lot of people, Andrew. 
Um, but really coming with those characteristics you mentioned, right? Like really coming to the table with that thought leadership, with that level of expertise in yeah. so many different ways. And that's what I think, Julia, our sector needs is, you know, it is certainly time to let go of the same old, same old, you know, with technology advancements and the way in which we can work. It's really, it's, past time, but now's a good time to start to embrace that modern role and how it can impact your mission even further. Absolutely. And I think this is an exciting time to focus in. I love, Andrew, that you brought up, um, you know, the, the leadership quotient, but also like the strategic aspect. I think a lot of times we think, oh, and I fall into this trap, you know, oh, I've got my task list and I got to check off you know, tick the boxes and it's task oriented versus thought oriented, right? And so it's a new dawn. It's not just about getting the reports or the forms filled out. It's really more about, you know, thinking and being a more of a holistic player. So um, a fascinating discussion. I mean, this is, Jared, this is kind of our jam, don't you think? I mean, we love having these conversations. I do. You know, I really love bringing in the introduction to organizations to think differently, right? And to have that proven expertise that Andrew, you've brought and your colleagues from YPTC have brought is that this isn't new to certain individuals, right? It might be new to your organizational structure, but there's so much that has been tried and, and proven in a really positive way. So Andrew, Thank you. I'm so glad that you joined us today. For those of you watching and listening, we've had the great pleasure of a, a cowboy himself, Andrew Miller, director, your part-time controller, and you're joining us from Houston. So thank you for that. That's right. Thank you so much. Happy trails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, this has been a lot of fun and we are so appreciative. Check out YPTC.com. It's your, short for your part-time controller. Um, you can get a lot of information. It's free. Um, they are an incredible resource. No matter if you're a client or not, doesn't, doesn't matter, but they just have tons of content on there to help you and your nonprofit navigate what it means to be in a modern relationship with your accounting and finance team and it's it's an exciting conversation and dare, dare i say it's an it's an exciting time again i'm julia patrick ceo of the american nonprofit academy I've been joined today by the nonprofit her nerd herself miss candy corn i love that I love that. Well, you know, you either love or hate candy corn. And as we were talking, candy corn has been getting a bad rap this year. So I wanted to represent it positively. I think that's true. And and spiders get a bad rap. And so they I do. want to represent them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. We want to thank along with, um, you know, all the folks that really helped make the nonprofit show work. We want to give a shout out and, and hope that trick-or-treats come to the way of Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University, staffing boutique, nonprofit nerd, and nonprofit tech talk. These are the folks that, as we always say, join us day in and day out. And um, it's really a remarkable thing to have their, have them in our, our corner. They don't scare us at all, right, Jarrett? Nope. <laughs> Not at all. It's fantastic to have their partnership. Fantastic, Andrew, to have you here. Dressed for the occasion. I appreciate that. You know, last year, I think YPTC team really kicked it off into high gear. So we have we have big shoes to fill. Yeah. It's, Absolutely. It, yeah, that that they YPTC now owns Halloween, as far as I'm concerned. That's right. That's what we're Never. hoping for. <laughs> That's what we're hoping for. Oh my gosh. Well, you guys, this has been a lot of fun. It's been serious fun. And uh, I love this approach. Uh, you know, Andrew, it leaks over into so many parts of nonprofit leadership. And so this has been a great, great conversation to have. And again, we have over 900 episodes with conversations um, that I think are super interesting and really can help you navigate the success of your nonprofit. 900 is frightening. That is a lot. <laughs> That's my, the screamer. I love yeah. it. Okay. Well, hey, everybody. As we like to end every episode, we want to remind everyone 
to stay well so you can do well. we'll see you back here tomorrow.